I, I was in LA when I hit the pit, the like the precipice. Yeah. And I walked outside of my house in LA mm -hmm. and I stood in the middle of the street and I was just weeping and sobbing and crying because I didn't know what to do. It was the first time in my life where all my life I knew, especially growing up in Albany, Georgia, yeah. I knew that some white people just did not like me because of the color of my skin. Right. And that's something that I've had to live with my whole life. As a black man, that's something you deal with. Right. You know when you're in a situation that's not that's not you know it's comfortable or safe for you. Right. I never experienced people who looked like me um, Just, act that way towards another black person. Yeah. Um, and it was a lot for me to process. Yeah. And I've done my best to be somebody who can represent being a black man in a white world in a white world could be you know yeah i've done my best to yeah you know, and of course you make mistakes along the way yes but you course. learn from those mistakes your lessons and those mistakes that i've made also give me the right and the authority to mentor Yes. Young black men, because I've been there, I've done it. I can tell you what not to do. I can tell you where not to go. I can tell right. you, you, you know, because I've made those mistakes and I'm not ashamed of the mistakes that I made. You shouldn't be. You know, so it, I'm, I'm standing in the middle of the street and I'm sobbing and I'm crying because here I am thinking that I am being like, you know, a life for black for young yeah. black boys who say you know yeah the young black boy might be looking at point and be like oh i want to do this yeah and i want to be that example of yes you can do yes. this yes and you can do it better and greater than i did yeah. you know um i doubt it but okay and it hurt me yeah it hurt me bad so i went in and i made this three-part video and i was just real with people but at the end of the day, I said that I apologize. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not apologizing because what I think I did, that I, I'm not apologizing because I think what I did was wrong. Right. But I'm apologizing to anyone if I offended you. Yes. Because you it's never I mean. my intention to do that. And so about once or twice a year, Okay. There are these certain people. I've blocked a lot of gay black Twitter. I'll you be gotta, honest. You gotta. It's not because I wanted to show them. Right. Or, or you know, say, oh, you want to talk about me? I'm going to block you. Right. I blocked them to preserve my mental stability. Right. Because I am in control of my energy. Right. And, and what I consume and what I take in. Yeah. And then I block it so I don't have to see it, so I don't have to consume it. Yeah. Because after a while, subconsciously, that stuff starts to eat at you. Yes, it does. And it changes you. Yep. And you don't even notice it until it's too late. Yep. But anyway, um, there's these certain people who bring it up like clockwork every year. Every year they bring it up. And then, you know, people say that I don't fuck black men or I don't make content with black men, which is not true. Um, my whole thing is like diversity yeah. and inclusiveness. Yes. So I don't exclusively fuck just black men. Right. I make content with every shape, color, size, because I'm very big on that. Yeah. And I want to make it to where when people look at the video, they don't say, oh, this is an interracial video. Oh, right. he's, you know, with an Asian. Oh, he's with a black person. Oh, he's with a white person. I want people to look at it and say, these are two beautiful humans. Yeah. Sharing in an experience, you yeah. know? Yeah.